Hello again, YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. My name is McPato, and this is McPato PC. And today I'm bringing you guys another how to video, and it'll be how to install an M.2 drive into your motherboard. Uh, and in my particular case, the part two of this video will be how to move your files from your existing SSD or hard drive over to your new drive and not lose any data through a process known as cloning. Uh, so we're going to do that and then it should then boot up no problem using this new drive which is much faster than the SSD I currently have installed. Uh, it's worth noting before we start you're going to need a few things. Obviously you're going to need an M.2 drive and again M.2 refers to the type of socket the drive uh, uses to connect to your motherboard uh, and that is this particular uh, socket here, the M.2 socket. Uh, there are different speed ratings and uh, controllers, and those are the SATA controller, the uh, PCI Express, which comes in a few different varieties. This is the fastest, the by four, or it uses four PCI Express lanes to transmit and receive data through the motherboard. There's also a two times uh, as well, which would be slower than this one here, but faster than SATA. Um, this drive here is a 500 gigabyte Western Digital Black and it should it should be a nice boost in performance from the Samsung 850 Evo I'm using currently. Uh, this one here says it'll do up to 3400 megabytes reading which uh, is quite a bit faster. Uh, so we're gonna dive into that installation process in just a moment. Uh, you're also going to need a small screw, uh, which hopefully you guys can see that. These typically are inside your, your motherboard box. So if you guys have your box or you have the hardware that came with the, the motherboard, have a look for these little screws. They have a flat head. It's a star or Phillips and uh, generally pretty short in terms of the screw length. And then you'll need uh, a screwdriver as well. So on my particular, actually I'll bring you guys in closer, we'll have a look and then I'll do the installation and then we'll move over to the computer. Uh, but I'll just bring you guys in a little closer so you can see the M.2 socket on the motherboard. Okay, so this motherboard that I'm using is the ASRock uh, X470 Tai Chi. And it does have two uh, M.2 sockets that come uh, included with the motherboard. So... I'll be using this one here, uh, which is just below the CPU socket. And it's covered right now with a, a heat sink for dissipating heat. Uh, some of these drives do get quite warm. And so these uh, heat sinks can help in keeping it cool. Um, though I wouldn't worry too much about the temperature. Uh, so now I'm gonna remove this heat sink right now using my screwdriver and a small star bit or Phillips. All right, so the screws did fall. I see them though, so I'll grab those in a moment. But uh, this is your heat sink. And on the other side here, there's a uh, thermal pad, which I'll remove this and then it'll stick to the drive itself um, and help dissipate the heat. This is made of uh, what feels like aluminum, so quality material. Uh, next step, I'll recover the screws, which fell out of it. Actual socket, it's a little hard to see from this side, so we're just gonna move back over here. So that's where the, the drive will plug into here. That's your M.2 socket. Again, you should probably have your computer laying on its side to do this but uh, that would make for me filming a little more difficult so i chose this option but we'll see how that goes uh, this is your your uh, physical drive here you'll notice that the at the end there where the the gold color is there's a little notch that makes sure that you can only put the drive in one way and this is the correct orientation uh, if you look at the motherboard close where the the drive plugs in you'll see that the socket is on the or the, the little notches on the bottom part of the, the socket. So that's how the drive will go in. Uh, and then at the very back here, you can see a notch 
and that's where your screw goes in as well into one of these different uh, holes. So we're going to just take our, take our drive now. It just plugs in to the socket. You see it just clicked in there. And then this uh, screw hole on the back of the drive will actually line up. So, all right, so we've got the drive in place here. Uh, I'm just gonna put the screw in and then we'll move over to the computer and I'll start doing the software side of things. Okay, so we're done with the, the installation or reinstallation of the, the hardware, the, the heat sink and the actual drive. Now it's time to copy or clone the image of the drive I was using with my Windows installation to the new drive. Uh, and this is one option. The other option is you can do what's called a fresh or clean installation of Windows. Uh, that is more time consuming, but can help if you're having issues or if it's a, an old installation and it's running a little bit slow. Uh, it'll clean out your registry and everything like brand new. So that's definitely an option as well. Keep in mind though that that will mean you need to reinstall all your drivers and all your programs and all that sort of stuff. So if you want to save yourself that time and you're happy with how things are, are running and it will run faster just because it'll be on this faster drive uh, as well. So if everything's good, you're not having issues, there's no, there's no virus, there's no uh, contamination of your windows or corruption, then cloning is a good option to save a lot of time. Uh, I'm going to recommend this software, but there's lots of different ones that you can choose from. This is free. It's called uh, Macrium software. Uh, I'll link the website in the description of the video, but it's up here as well. There's a free uh, option as well. There are paid options. And uh, this list here shows you basically what it what each version covers and uh, I'll let you guys choose what's the best uh, for you. I'm using the free version so this free one here and it will allow me to do di direct disk cloning and that's what I want so uh, with and keep in mind when you're doing the installation uh, you just need to click here home use download the free version and it'll ask you if you want to register your installation. You can provide an email or you can skip all that and just, just do the installation. Um, so it's up to you. So anyway, once it's set up, I'm just going to close that. And we're going to launch the software. When you load it up, you're going to see something like this. I have four drives in my computer, five now with the, the new M.2 drive. So I know that my Windows is on this one here, the Samsung 850 EVO 500 gigabyte, not to be confused with the 860 EVO. So that's an example of how close uh, the drive names can be. So just keep that in mind and make sure you're cloning the right drive. Um, this kind of gives you a, a clue. There's a recovery partition here. There's uh, the primary, there's your C drive. A lot of times C drive is the default drive for Windows. Uh, but I know that this is the drive I would like to copy. And right down here at the bottom, uh, we have a, a WD. And that is my Western Digital uh, NVMe M.2 drive. So this is where I will be cloning to, and this is where I'm copying from. So we're going to click on clone this disk. And it defaulted here, you'll see, to the 860 because that's the first drive in the list. And that's probably just because of which SATA port that drive is connected to. So I will pick here, select a different source disk in the right side. And we're going to pick disk 2, which is the 850 EVO. And then it lets me choose if I want to copy over uh, everything or just some of it. Uh, 
the drives in this case are the exact same size. They're both 500 gigabytes. So there's lots of room for me to, to copy it over and copy everything. If you have a drive, for example, an M.2 drive that is smaller than your current drive, you might have to delete, you know, games, programs, stuff out of your downloads folder. You can choose not to copy the recovery file and leave it on that disk if you're leaving that disk in the computer. So there's a lot of options, but just keep that in mind. You may need to trim some of the, the contents. In my case, I don't need to. And then we'll pick here, select disk to clone to. Uh, if you select a different disk, your current operation will be disregarded. Do you want to continue? Yes. So we're going to copy everything to this drive. We're going to click on copy selected partitions. So you can see there, and I haven't formatted the, the new drive, the M.2. It's just as is when installed, so you don't have to worry about formatting it or anything like that. Um, so we see, I'm just gonna click here on cloned properties just to make sure everything's okay. So it looks good. Okay, so once that's done, I'm gonna click on next. Uh, schedule is clone. I wanna do it right away, so we're gonna go next. It's telling me here what it will be doing. Uh, so the source disk again is the 850. The destination is the Western Digital, which is the one I'm wanting to copy to, so everything looks good. All right, so now we're gonna hit finish. Run this backup now, save backup and schedule. I don't wanna do that. So, all right, so everything looks good. We're gonna go okay. And now it's cloning. This process can take quite a long time from my understanding. It can take literally hours so with that in mind i'm gonna end the video here for now and i'll come back once it's all done okay so we're all done with the cloning it took 32 minutes and 53 seconds uh, again in my case i'm using a sata uh, samsung evo 850 ssd as my old drive and i clone that over to the new drive so if you're using an older mechanical hard drive this process would take longer and of course, uh, this, depending on the size of your drive, I'm using a 500 gigabyte. So if you had a terabyte or larger, you could reasonably expect that this time would uh, just about double, depending again, how much uh, actual content you have in those drives. But uh, now that we're done this, we're gonna need to boot into our BIOS or UEFI and ensure that we're booting off of our M.2 drive as opposed to our SATA drive and that will uh, and if you want to make sure that it's actually doing that you can unplug your SATA drive the one or your previous drive rather to make sure that it's booting off of the new drive uh, so we're going to do that now and then we'll come back into Windows once that is done all right guys so here we are inside the ASRock Tai Chi BIOS Again, I'm using the X470 version, and I apologize for the camera motion. Um, but basically, now that we're in the BIOS, and if you're not sure how to enter your BIOS or UEFI, when your computer boots up, it should tell you in either the bottom right hand or in the middle somewhere, press this button to enter the BIOS or UEFI. In my case, it's the delete key or F2. And I can just repeatedly press that button. As soon as you turn on the computer, just keep pressing it. And it should uh, it should load into, I don't mean hold it, but like click it over and over and over again. Uh, so once you get in here, you can see that I have actually a category called boot. So we're going to use the arrow keys on the keyboard, tab over there. And then we have different options. So option one is set up 
right now for the uh, 850 Evo. See, so you guys can see that there. And I need to go down to that bottom one, which is the Western Digital. We're going to press Enter, and then we're going to go down to Option 2. And I'm going to change that to USB. Just so that there's no uh, there's no mistaking it, and it will use the proper uh, proper uh, boot sector. All right, so that's all we need to change. Then we're going to go over to exit, and we're going to choose save changes and exit, which is the first choice. You can also press F10, save configuration changes and exit setup. Yes. So now I'll see you guys back in Windows once it boots up. All right, so here we are back in Windows, loaded very quickly. And I just loaded up Crystal Disk Info version 8. And as you guys can see, this is also a free software if you want to download it. I'll put a link down in the description as well. Um, C drive, which is the default boot drive, is now my Western Digital 500 gigabyte and it tells you all the information here so we can see that it is the NVMe drive and uh, everything appears to be in order. Our old drive is this E drive and it is the, as you can see, the Samsung 850 Evo. It's still there and if we go to File Explorer here, uh, we'll be able to see that the E drive and the C drive have the same uh, files. That's because they were copied over and this now has become the, the new default drive. So that's going to conclude this video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. And again, this will work on hard drives, mechanical drives, SSDs, whatever you have. The process is the same, but um, in my case, I upgraded for speed and went with the NVMe and that has worked out perfectly. So now I'm going to go ahead and format the old drive and I'll use it as a storage drive. So there you go. All right. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. We'll be back soon with another video. If you like this one, please hit the subscribe button as well as the like button. And uh, that would be greatly appreciated. So until next time, bye-bye.